Would everyone please remain standing while Leisha Gray brings our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the rare ones we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare Sting in gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that start spangled?
Thank you, Ms. Gray, for that brilliant rendition. Next, we will have our invocation by the Reverend Leo Riley. Let us pray. Oh, precious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We glorify your most holy name this day, God. And Lord, as we come before you right now, God, we honor you today, God, for the opportunity to celebrate the life and the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. And we pray today, God, that his vision will continually be fulfilled in each and every one of our hearts today, God. Lord, that we may soar in the things that, you, that he declared that we will do, that we will walk hand in hand, we will walk in unity, and we will walk in oneness as a people in this state of West Virginia. We do glorify and magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, anyone choosing to have a seat may be seated. Good morning. My name is Jill Upson. I am the Executive Director of the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs. I am also the Executive Chair of the Martin Luther King State Holiday Commission. We are so pleased to have you this year with us at our bell ringing ceremony. Martin Luther King Jr. ended his famous I Have a Dream speech with let freedom ring, and when this happens, we will allow freedom to ring. When we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all God's children, both black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. So each year we hold these bell ringing events to unify and to remember. Dr. King also said, there will be a day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. So at this time, we're going to have remarks. We're gonna switch the order up a little bit because a couple people are running late. So first we're going to have Mary Eckerson, who's gonna be giving remarks on behalf of Senator Shelley Moore Capito. Thank you for having me here today. It's an honor to be with you on behalf of Senator Capito. And she brings, hold on, I'm having a technical difficulty. She brings the following remarks in celebration of the day of this wonderful American. Thank you, Jill, for inviting me to join you today to honor the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I would like to commend Governor Justice for appointing you to lead the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs. You served, the West, you served West Virginia well in the West Virginia legislature, and I have every confidence that you will do the same in the Office of Minority Affairs. Thanks to you and the Martin Luther King Jr. State Holiday Commission for all the work that has been done to continue this very important event, celebrating the life of Dr. King. I am sorry I'm not able to join you in person, but know that I'm with you in spirit as we honor this great man. Dr. King was a true American icon who fought bravely and tirelessly for freedom and equality, regardless of the adversity he faced. He encouraged so many to treat others with kindness and love to create a better world for future generations. Today's theme, unity has never meant uniformity, holds true in all aspects of our lives. To quote Dr. King, we, we may have all come on different ships, but we are in the same boat now in which he spoke of celebrating our differences while inspiring all of us to work together with understanding to share a variety of ideas and beliefs to create better solutions to the problems facing society. Our country is a better place today because of his words and his teachings. I hope all West Virginians and all Americans will continue to keep his words in mind and follow his example. By doing so, we not only honor Dr. King's legacy, but influence future generations to do the same. As time passes, it is important to keep Dr. King's dream alive and ensure that his message will not be forgotten. 
Thank you again for inviting me to join you today on this important occasion. It is an honor to serve you in the United States Senate. Sincerely, Shelley. Thank you. Next, we're going to have a selection by the Capitol High School VIP Choir. Thank you very much, Capitol High VIPs. Next, I'd like to bring up Terry Berkeley. She's going to deliver remarks on behalf of Senator Joseph A. Manchin. Great afternoon, great people of the greatest state of our country, West Virginia. My name is Terry Berkeley, Director of Constituent Services for our United States Senator, Joe Manchin, and I'm proud to join you today. As we often acknowledge the famous I Have a Dream speech, in it, King notes that our destiny is tied with their destiny. And as he calls people from all walks of life, he says that their freedom is inextricably bound with our freedom and we cannot walk alone. Amen. In the same spirit, I am honored today to bring you greetings from a United States Senator who has that same tenacity to reach across the aisles, whether Democrat or Republican, to find solutions that are good for West Virginians and Americans. And to that, in his words, he says that he is honored today to recognize the notion that unity has never meant uniformity, 
And as we are joined for this beautiful and symbolic march at our state's capital, let us reflect on the challenges that have faced our nation, as well as the countless individuals who fought valiantly for years to overcome them. I truly appreciate keynote speaker, Dr. Michelle Foster, president and CEO of the Greater Canal Valley Foundation, the Martin Luther King Jr. State Holiday Commission, Herbert Henderson, Minority Affairs Director, Jill Ufson, and all of our community leaders who strive to make a difference for the greater good every single day. Dr. King once said, life's most persistent and urgent message is what are you doing for others? The Mountain State and this great nation are home to countless leaders who in the spirit of Dr. King are inspiring and making substantial contributions to their communities and entire nation. Thank you for your passion and your innovative ideas that honors Dr. King's memory ever, every single day. With warmest regards, Joe Manchin III, United States Senator. Thank you. So before I move on, I have to ask, is Susie Acevedo here in the audience? Susie? Okay. Um, well, I would like to acknowledge that I see both our uh, House Speaker, the Honorable Roger Hanshaw, and I also see our Senate President, uh, the Honorable Mitch Carmichael, and I'd like to invite President Carmichael to come up and make a few remarks. Thank you, Thank you Jill, and uh, I'm anxious to hear those warmest remarks by Senator Manchin. I could use some of those warmest <laughs> remarks, <laughs> but it is an honor and a pleasure to be with you in this state that is founded upon the principle of non-discrimination, a state that it honors the uh, diversity of our nation and of our state. And no one, no, no opportunity presents itself in greater degree than Martin Luther King Jr. holiday to acknowledge that this state, this nation, this people will stand for non-discrimination and advance the cause of humankind in every method that we can. And so it's a pleasure and an honor to let you know that the state senator of West Virginia stands lockstep with uh, the principle of non-discrimination, of advancement of people of all walks of life. And uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you here this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Carmichael. So we are fortunate to have with us today someone who has spent his entire life putting into practice the ideals of freedom, unity, and service. I could not be more proud and more honored to introduce him to bring remarks for today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the Governor of West Virginia, the Honorable James C. Justice. I know today is a really, really, really important day. Martin Luther King Jr., if you really just step back and think about it, a man that came to all of us as a dreamer, a man that had a dream, a man that had a dream really and truly that saw us as a better people's he saw injustice, he saw wrong, and he put us on a pathway, a pathway, a pathway of much more goodness. <laughs> now, today I was introduced by Jill Upson. You know, Jill Upson is with, you know, our minority affairs, Herbert Henderson, an incredible individual. Just think. Just think, think about the Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Commission and all the good work that they do. Think about just how much this man changed our lives. You know, a lot of times we, we celebrate accomplishments of politicians, 
this man came to us as a real true leader. Now, we still got a lot of work to do. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that all the work is done and all is good. I still see injustice. And I still see things that we need to work on. You know, a long time back, and I really didn't have any idea exactly what I was going to say to you, but a long time back, my son, I owned a piece of property in South Carolina, and it bordered right up beside this church. Now, it just so happened that all the members of the church were African-American individuals. They wanted to buy five acres of land from me right on the corner to put in a youth center. Now, I only tell you this not to be patting myself on the back in any way. I tell you this because this is exactly what I said. I was just a young guy. I was probably 35 years old, maybe 40. My son, Jay, was about eight years old. I had a contract they had written up a real estate contract with a $1,000 check attached to it to buy that five acres of land for $2,000 an acre. I said, Jay, I know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go to the church this Sunday. We were down there working. We're going to go to the church this Sunday, and we're going to walk right in. We're going to sign the real estate contract, strike out all the money, and we're going to put it in the collection plate. Well, we walked right into church. And you could have cut the air. Because to be perfectly honest, there had probably never been a white person in that church ever. I stood up, and that's what I said. Because you see, too many black individuals today walk, walk into a situation where they're uncomfortable and the air can be cut. I stood up and said, should we not pray? Should we not pray for a world that when I walk in here or you walk in a place that you would feel uncomfortable, that we all feel welcome and we all feel dignity and respect? That was a long, long time ago. I didn't think about telling you that at all, but it was a really great day for me and my family. So today we celebrate a leader that brought goodness beyond belief you know where I always stand, and I'll break my neck to see in any way whatsoever that I can that we always do that in West Virginia, and we still try to know we've got issues and problems, and we need to make them better. God bless you, and God bless this great man, and God bless what he gave every single one of us. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Governor Justice. So with that, we will now have our bell ringing for peace. I'd like to invite uh, the children first to uh, take the rope, and then uh, any of our distinguished guests that would also like to join in, and then anyone else after that. And what I'll do is I'll count to three, and on the count of three, we'll ring the bell three times. And then immediately following that, we're gonna have our benediction given by Pastor Leo Riley, and we'll dismiss, we're having a reception over at the Culture Center where there will be light refreshments. So everyone who wants to join in the bell ringing, please grab the rope. Are we all set to let freedom ring from West Virginia? Yeah. On the count of three. One, two, three. One more time. One more. One more. <laughs> 